Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by the motor effect. You should then be able to calculate the size of the force generated by the motor effect. And finally you should be able to determine the direction of the force by using Fleming's left hand rule. And all of this is for higher tier students only. In a previous video we saw that a magnetic field is produced when a current moves through a wire. So the question is, what would happen if we place this wire in another magnetic field? I'm showing you here a wire carrying an electric current. The arrow shows the direction of the conventional current. Remember that there's a magnetic field around this wire, but we're not showing it. We've now placed the wire into a magnetic field. The magnetic field around the wire now interacts with the magnetic field between the magnets. This means that the wire now experiences a force. In this case the force is in the upward direction. This force would cause the wire to move upwards. Scientists call this the motor effect and you could be asked that in your exam. We can calculate the size of the force using this equation. The force in newtons equals the magnetic flux density in tesla multiplied by the current in amperes multiplied by the length of the wire in meters. And you are given this equation in the exam so you don't need to learn it. Now there are a couple of points about this equation. Firstly this applies to a wire which is at right angles to the magnetic field. Secondly the magnetic flux density is a measure of the strength of the magnetic field. Here's a sample question for you. A wire has a length of 2.5 meters and is carrying a current of 1.5 amperes. The magnetic flux density is 0.05 tesla. Calculate the force acting on the wire. So pause the video and try this yourself. Okay, as we said before, the force equals the magnetic flux density multiplied by the current multiplied by the length. The magnetic flux density is 0.05 tesla. The current is 1.5 amperes and the length is 2.5 meters. Putting these into the equation it gives us a force acting on the wire of 0.19 newtons to two decimal places. Now in the exam you could be asked to name the factors that affect the size of the force. Looking again at the equation, we can see that the force depends on three factors. The magnetic flux density, the current, and the length of the conductor. Okay, going back to our diagram, as we saw, the wire is experiencing a force. We're going to look now at how to determine the direction of the force. To do that, we use Fleming's left hand rule. Here's how we do it. Place your thumb, first finger, and second finger so they're at right angles like this. Now point your first finger in the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. Now point your second finger in the direction of the conventional current, in other words positive to negative. Finally the direction that your thumb is pointing shows you the direction of the motion, in other words the force. So I'd like to use Fleming's left hand rule to show that the direction of motion of this wire will be upwards. Pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, this shows a simple version of Fleming's left hand rule, and we can see that the thumb points up in this case, showing that the motion is upward. Now there's one final point about the motor effect. If the conductor is parallel to the magnetic field, then it will not experience a force. So this shows the conductor running parallel to the magnetic field, and this conductor will not experience a force. Whereas this conductor is at right angles to the magnetic field. So this will experience a force. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on the motor effect in my revision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above.